Okay, hello there, everybody, and welcome to episode 308 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. This promises to be a very special episode indeed, or I hope it's, it's going to be a special episode. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do consider doing so, and if you would like to support my work, you will find information about how you can do that by following the link to coffee below. Uh, leave a comment, ask a question, whether you're watching the live or you're watching the recording, but I think we need to get started because I have delayed this long enough. First comment goes to Rich again, who says, hello, Angela's here still. Thank you very much for sticking around. Hi there again, everyone. Eric says, Paris, yes. And lots of oh my's and oh, oh my goodnesses. I'm expecting lots and lots of comments. I want to be reading lots of comments and I want to have lots of interactions with this you for this one. Because what is all this about? Well, if you missed... Um, a video that I did, uh, what was it, last week, just over a week ago, you may not be aware of the story behind these, but to, 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 to cut a long story short, uh, during my holiday travels, I happened to stumble upon, and I really did just happen to stumble upon this uh, perfumery uh, in, in Italy. Um, I have been asked to remain circumspect about its location, so please don't, don't ask. A few people have asked, and I've had to sort of say really sorry, but I kind of am meant to keep quiet about it. But anyway, they had um, quite a few older goodies. And so I spent a fair bit of my hard earned cash there. Um, I could have spent a bit more. But anyway, I thought, who better to share all of these and discover all of these with than 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 you? So he always stumbles upon those places, says Ashraf. No, I don't. I don't. I got really, really lucky this time. So this is one of the ones that I showed in the previous video, an extrait of Chanel number no. five. And I'm going to try and I'm, 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 I'm going to unseal the, um, I'm going to break the wax seal on the extrait with you together. But maybe we'll save that one for the end. Um, but I have been just waiting to unseal. So I think we should start with that one. And look, completely sealed still. This is the uh, EDT of Opium Pour Homme from YSL. Uh, and this was originally released in 1995. And if the internet is to be believed, it was composed um, by Jacques Cavalier. Now, you may be thinking, well, so what? This isn't that isn't a very big deal because Opium Pour Homme is actually still available. Uh, as, uh, I, th I think you can find it. Um, in quite a few places, but um, it's the ingredients list that uh, kind of um, caught my attention because apart from a little bit of colouring, it's basically alcohol, fragrance, water. And so I thought, okay, so this might be quite good. By the way, I should just say, because this is going to be an episode in which people either during this uh, broadcast or later on when the recording is on YouTube and people are leaving comments, there may be people who will start saying things about, you know, IFRA um, destroying the industry with their insistence on, uh, with, with, with banning substances and restricting the usage of certain substances. That's, that's not a debate I want to get into today, apart, except to say that, that I personally don't actually think it's as clear cut and simple as that. Um, IFRA, have actually done a lot to enable perfumers to keep using certain materials that would otherwise have been banned if IFRA had not stepped in and supported. And also, the more we learn and the more we know about certain substances, maybe there are some out there that we shouldn't be using. For instance, I know of a few brands that are at the moment quite proud of the fact that they're putting raw bergamot uh, into their perfumes. Well, if you if you wear a lot of that on skin and you go out and it's a sunny day and you've put and, and the skin where you've applied that raw bergamot is exposed to the sun, you can actually get a really, really nasty burn. So it's really not as simple as saying if for bad guys, the rest of us good guys. But let's park that to one side and I'm going to be smelling all of these on paper today anyway. What are people saying? Uh, Gaza is saying hello. Audrey saying hello to Rich Mitch. Uh, Audrey says, I agree with what you're saying. People would soon have a problem if the fragrances we were wearing suddenly made our body parts fall off. Yeah, well, th that's a whole other debate, okay? Because some people would say that that um, there's also a lot of exaggeration, etc. But anyway, 
Today, we are just going to enjoy this and, and have fun with it. So let us unseal. Uh, looking forward to the Rive Gauche. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a special version of Rive Gauche. Let's start with Monsieur Cavalier's Opium pour homme. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if my gut fell off, says Richard. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you know, if, if like the sprayer on this doesn't work, I'm going to be so annoyed. Um, and I, I, I don't know exactly in what condition these have been stored. It could be, oh, is it actually even a spray at all? I think it's a splash. Ah, okay. Okay, I did not know this when I purchased it. Um, have you smelled current opium pour homme, says Woozy? No, no, um, no. I, I had I had a, is it a splash? Yes, it's a splash. How unusual. Whoa. Okay, drop that one. I'm not going to be able to pick that up now during this broadcast. Right, let's get straight in there. Splash bottles with small openings. Kind of underrated because of the original opium, says Pradeep. I smelt a... Um, the current EDP is actually fantastic, says Rich. Oh, well, there you go. So maybe, maybe I should have done a comparison. Okay, can I get the... Mind my head. Sorry about that, folks, but I wanted to be able to put the lid back on. So let's pop that on here. Let's see. So this vintage YSL Opium Pour Homme EDT. Oh, it's just so Jacques Cavalier somehow, isn't it? And so late 80s, early 90s. Oh. Very, very nice. And actually seems to be in pretty good condition. It's it it's reminding me quite a lot of um also Jacques Cavalier, uh YSL Rive Gauche pour homme, except that that one is a kind of hairy chested fougere, whereas this one seems to be a, a hairy chested ambery resinous scent. Um but very definitely kind of late 80s, early 90s type hairy chested with some strong, strong woods. Um, but in that true Cavalier style, and he's so good at doing masculines, isn't he? He always softens them. Do you remember the advert, the the, the print advert for uh, YSL Rive Gauche Pour Homme? Um, I always thought it was it's such a good ad because was, or at least one of the versions of the ad that I remember, because wasn't it like a guy's face in a sort of profile of a guy's face and he had quite a bit of stubble and yet it was it was a fairly delicate sort of gentle softly featured kind of face and that seems to be his style of masculine so he gives you he gives you the stubble he gives you the hair he gives you the sort of overt masculinity um but he always softens it and that's definitely here with the kind of soapy powdery accord makes me think as well of um uh, do you remember Troisième Homme from Caron, which which also did this kind of rough and gentle aspect of masculinity? Uh, Rich Mitch says, opium pour homme always makes me think of the word billowing. Yeah, I suppose so. There is something quite airy about it. Really lovely. It, points of reference, as I say for me, are Troisième Homme from Caron, uh, Jaipur pour homme from Boucheron, those, um, those types of masculines that contrast woods very, very, very strongly with, with softer elements. This is so exciting to watch as you unbottle these gems, says Angela. It's exciting for me. Lady Whistle Downs Paper says, Bonjour, Perseilles, can't believe I'm actually catching your live. Well, you are live. I can vouch for the fact that you are live. Uh, two lovely compositions, says Ashfaq. Which one do you mean the Caron and the and the Boucheron? Um, ah. Oh, I want to, I just want to keep smelling this one. Okay, but we need to carry on. Let's let's label. Uh, so excited to see the vintage unboxing, says the scented bookworm. I'm a big fan of opium. The current EDT is pretty bombastic in monsoons. Reminds me of our puja and temple rituals. Do you do you mean do you mean um men's opium or or the original ladies? And yeah, some kind of strong, strong resinous facet here. But it definitely smells of the past somehow. And and yeah, I get, you know, 95, it was composed, you know, almost, almost 30 years ago now. Okay. I think next we should go to the Rive Gauche. 
uh, which I had a very, very brief sniff of because Madame Perselace couldn't restrain herself and she wanted to smell this straight away because for the longest time, Rive Gauche was actually her signature, not anymore. Now, Rive Gauche has, got, has had a bit of a um, checkered history. The original one, as uh, uh, many of you will know, came out in 1970, composed by Jacques Polge, and it's, I think, Michel E. I, I never know how you're meant to pronounce his surname, H-Y, uh, became successful immediately, pretty much, uh, and then generally considered to be one of the finest metallic aldehydic roses ever. But then uh, during the Tom Ford era at uh, YSL, so at the beginning of the current century, it was reformulated, maybe because it had to be reformulated, uh, 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 reportedly by Daniela Andrea, and fans of the original said that even though the, the 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 scent that she did was 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 perfectly fine, it it didn't kind of do it for them. Now, as far as I've been able to find out, this version, which is the alcohol-free fraîcheur version, so in, not just regular Rive Gauche, but it's an alcohol-free spray. This version, as far as I've been able to come out, uh, find out, came out in 1995. So you would imagine, you would think that it's based on the original formulation. Um, and the, the the ingredients list is interesting because it 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 doesn't contain the the sort of allergens that we normally would expect. It's got things like hydrogenated castor oil and glycerin and something called sorbitol and methyl paraben and ethyl paraben. So lots and lots of parabens. But I guess it's to do with. I'm, I'm, and this really is a guess. I guess it is just to do with the fact that they wanted to make an alcohol-free version of it. Um, Madame Perselaise is a smart lady, says Lindsay. Yes, she absolutely is. Um, Ashfaq says, I think, oh, what are you talking about now? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, so let's have another spray of this one. I, I love original Rivoche as well. It, there's something so, so very YSL sophisticated about it, isn't it? And the bottle was great. And I love um, Rive Gauche Pour Homme too. Ah, now see, this is so definitely, this is so definitely the original. It's so, oh, this, couldn't we just smell vintages all the time? <laughs> um, this Rive Gauche had to be much fattier, good quality, says DL. Okay. Um, Now, the fact the fact that it's alcohol free, I'm not necessarily smelling um, on this. Uh, what's Oslim saying about parabens? Parabens are not bad ingredients. They protect products from molding and work in very low concentration, so you don't get allergies as easily. Uh huh. Sorry, just had to get this out. I know that there's a lot, you know, because a lot of products shout about the fact that they're paraben free and then a lot of people come along and say well hang on but actually parabens aren't all bad right i have some original derby that is in pristine condition if you'd like to try says rich what well, you're asking the whole world are you rich everybody email him if you'd like some original derby i, I did get your email rich thank you very much i will reply to you as soon as i can um so this is this this is rive gauche as i remember it it's got that rose note in the heart a very kind of pink and yet sophisticated rose, and that fantastic, slightly Pacaraban Calandre like metallic, oxidey, aldehydic quality at the top. Shades of Serge Lutin's Fille de Berlin. And I, I think I remember when I first smelled La Fille de Berlin, thinking that is this like a kind of retelling of Rive Gauche? Uh, this would have been a summer version of the scent, I guess, says Angeline. Yes, I, I, I guess so, fresher. I mean, and, and look, it's it's it, there's still so much in here. I'm I'm actually going to enjoy wearing this one, I think. Um, and why is it that I think it's so 70s? Maybe, maybe there's something about that metallic quality because of scents like Calandre, because of maybe the the, the greenness of it. Do you know what it's also making me think of? Another fantastic piece of work, uh, Comme des Garçons 2. So not Two Man, but the, fir the, the, the first Comme des Garçons number two uh, with the rose oxide note. I mean, that was um, superb. This is, this is, this is, this is just so Paris somehow. Um, 
really, really fantastic piece of work. Oh, I'm so pleased that both of these are in good condition, really, really good condition. Now, things get really interesting. So let's have a bit of a tidy up because we may, we, um, may start getting a little bit messy here. So you just talk amongst yourselves for a second while I put away, let's just do this. So I put that one away. Now this was in the shop and I had no idea what it was, okay? Yves Saint Laurent, Maison de Couture, Eau de Parfum, 60 mils. I, uh, ingredients, ingredients, alcohol, fragrance, nothing else. So you can imagine I was immediately starting to get um, interested. Uh, will you divulge the prices, says Smarks? Well, I'd rather not exactly, but rest assured, the, these were these were totally affordable. I mean, you know, I was like thinking, I mean, okay, in total, I had to part with a bit of money, but um, for each individual item, um, yeah, they, they were they, they were affordable. They were very very easily affordable. Um, and so I went online straight away while I was in the shop to see if I could find out any more about this. And I didn't really find out a huge deal, except for the fact that it, it is genuine. It does exist because because some other people have got it. And apparently it was released in 1992. Uh, I'm going to show you what's in the box. Don't worry. Pretty. It was released in 1992. And there was another scent as well that was released that either was in the same bottle but had a different name and was a different scent or something or other. I'm not sure exactly what, but but basically nobody seems to know a huge amount about it. So if you're watching this and you do know about it, please tell me. So this is the box that you get when you open that box. At the top, it says Yves Saint Laurent Maison de Couture. And then how did this go? Oh, yes. Yeah, so this is a lid. Are you ready for this? OK, let's let's give it its. And then you go. Da da with green velvet lining, and you get, I mean, you know, I, I had no idea what this was. This was genuinely, and I and I didn't actually unseal it until after I'd bought it. So I was buying something that I didn't know what it was, but just the fact that I could find out almost nothing about it online made me think, okay, this is gonna be worth getting. So take a look at that bottle. So you, you can see the bottle there with a heart-shaped stopper. It's a splash bottle and a heart at the front, and it just says Yves Saint Laurent. So who can tell me about this? <laughs> Anybody? Um, oh my goodness, says Ashfaq, love these glass stopper bottles. That looks fancy, says Oslam. I know. And this looks like the presentation of the Champagne extra. Ooh, says Eric. Ah, see, I, I, there you go. So please, if you know anything about this, tell me, because I would like to find out a bit more. Uh, the interwebs told me that this was meant to be a green floral. And sure enough, that is what it is. A really, really beautiful green floral. Um, a sort of hyacinthy green, I think, I seem to remember. Um, such a beautiful glass bottle. I know, I mean, isn't isn't it just just great? Um, and can you still see that there? Let's, let's give it pride of place. Let's pop it, actually, let's pop it on its own box here. Yeah, you can still see that there. Can you imagine if it had been a factice, says Angela? Yeah, but then it wouldn't have said that it was eau de parfum and 60 mils and all the rest of it. So I think I knew I wasn't I wasn't getting a factice. Um it's 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 just like I mean I really, really need to know more about this because it is beautiful. It it's like a really, really superb 1960s green floral garlin. So it's like chamad you know, with that, with that fantastic hyacinth note. And what's the other one that I'm thinking of as well, that it slipped my mind? What's the other um, really excellent green floral that Garland did round about that time? Um, imagine it was Jedi. Do they have it, says Ashwag? No, no, no. They didn't actually have very many Garlands at all, or at least not Garlands that 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 are hard to find. A lot of the older Garlands are ones that are that are fairly relatively easy to find. Jean Daron says, now maybe, is that the one I'm thinking of? Or maybe I've got mixed up with something else. But I mean this is stunning. And it's it's very, very, very old worldy. So I think even in 1992 when it came out, it would have um seemed uh a, a bit old-fashioned, you know, but in the best possible way. It is just so, so, so sophisticated. 
so yeah, what else can I tell you? Very, very, very abstract. So the main note that comes out is this green hyacinthy floral heart, but there's a honey element to it as well, maybe a narcissus element. Um, fantastic citrusy opening, probably quite mossy in the base. I'm guessing it's going to be mossy in the base. Um, it's just what I need to do actually is is get in touch with some perfumer contacts that I may have and and just say to them, look, do you know anything about this? Because they, they would have been working and around when then this would have been released. Um, just just heavenly, 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 and 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 in in such pristine condition. I mean, it, it doesn't seem to have had its top notes fried at all. Although you know. I'm saying that maybe the top notes are fried because I don't know what the top notes are meant to be and, and I'm not smelling them very well anymore. Um, this wire cell says DL belongs to the early 1990s gold line, okay, including the compact powder, the lipstick, etc. Original designed by Yves Saint Laurent. Ah, see, I, I did, just keep the info coming, okay? Somebody out there will know more about this um, and indeed may have owned it. Uh, sounds amazing, says Angela, and can't be bad if it compares to Shamad. No, absolutely. And yes, that, that kind of metallic, inky, mossy feel is coming through. <sighs> so good, so good. All right, let's just get, let's be very, very careful with the blotters. Now, we're work, working our way up to the Chanel. Hopefully we are working our way up, because for all I know, that Chanel juice um, is is not going to be in great condition. Now, the Paris, sorry, let's let's do this properly. Paris. So the Paris, I didn't know what what concentration, what strength I was getting, but I could tell immediately from the design and the logo and the typeface and everything, this was going to be an old one. And sure enough, the ingredients list just says um, alcohol fragrance. Um, the chap in the shop said that he thought it was an extra, and I kind of agreed with him because, you know, 25 mils, but having done a bit of research, I think maybe it's an EDP, but, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. I love the fact that when you open the box, you get a guarantee. And what does it say? Um, yeah, if, if there's if there's an issue, if you have a problem, uh, return it with the defective flacon to Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> yeah, that was before the L'Oreal days. And pa Paris, many of you will be aware, I just think in its original form is, is just pure romance, probably, probably the most romantic scent we got in the 80s. Uh, one of the best things Sophia Groisman ever created. Now, check this out. So you open it up and you get a fancy presentation thing. Have I just wrapped it? No, let's do it properly. Of uh, Paris. There you go. With, with a kind of faux diamond at the top. And again, uh, a, a splash bottle. Let's pop the guarantee back in there because maybe the bottle will turn out to be defective. Gorgeous, says uh, Angela. Vetti Wera Damio says, any chance we see you do a review of the new Chanel Sycamore Parfum? As soon as I get my hands on it, don't you worry, I will be reviewing. I mean, how exciting is the thought of a Sycamore Extrait? But let's go to this. Now, this one I did smell, because again, I couldn't restrain myself. And with this one, I thought, ah, have the top notes gone off a little bit? Um, but doesn't matter because the heart was intact and the heart of Paris, I'm running out of space, the heart of Paris is just so stunning. How does that look? Are we still ma managing to maintain a semblance of decorum here? Right, so the top has just turned. It's just, it's just a little bit like, you know, wine that's been standing and getting aired a little bit too long, but immediately, immediately, that rows of a thousand petals just come rushing, just comes rushing towards you. I mean, this is this is one of the most romantic, swoon-inducing, heartfelt, joy-bursting roses ever. I mean, it really, really was like a homage to whatever Yves Saint Laurent would have chosen to make it a homage to, and he chose to make it a homage to Paris and his love of Paris. And you can really, really just feel love and adoration and joy bursting out of every facet of this scent. And then Sophia Groisman's trademark use of musks. She used, to, she used to structure her fragrances around huge, huge, huge blocks of musks in the base. And her scents tended to be quite linear. I mean, it was a style that she made extremely successful. Um, and it worked. It worked. Um, 
And, you know, smelling it now, I kind of think, gosh, did this smell kind of dated and slightly vintagey in the 80s as well? Um, and, I, and I can't remember. I mean, people wore Paris to death. Uh, I think my, even, I think my mum wore it. Um, and, and there's that lipsticky quality to it as well, you know, similar to Lancôme's Trésor. Um, and maybe it's that lipstick violet facet that actually made it feel a little bit more modern then. Maybe that still didn't have such a retro vibe to it. But it's it's really, really rich, juicy, almost like a cross between a rose and raspberries. Yeah, once you get past that, those dodgy top notes, this is this is this is in pretty good condition. I remember this and Paloma Picasso, says Cynthia, from my mother's vanity, beautiful roses. Yeah, Paloma Picasso was another really, really good chic, wasn't it? I remember when that came out. Um, Angela says, I had a friend who was extremely chic and it was her signature in the 80s. Ah, she must have smelled really good. Um, this is, see, I'm going to sit here and smell this all day as well. So nice. Uh, um, Anamika says, I had my Paris EDT as soon as it came out and being around 13, 14, I thought it was as modern as anything. Okay, right. So the big moment. Oh, please don't be disappointing. Right, let's just move this aside a little bit. Now, this is the Chanel number no. five X-tray that I found. Actually, two bottles, the original flacon and a kind of dabber flacon that has got some juice in it. Um, I need to try to date this properly. But as I said in the other video, the, the style of this logo here, uh, the, the proportions of the cap in relation to the rest of the bottle, thinness of the cap, the fact that it doesn't say parfum and just says, just says Paris, the fact, and I really don't know if you'll be able to see this because, yeah, because it won't zoom in well enough, but the logo on the wax seal is just a single letter C as opposed to the double C. These things apparently suggest that this could be from the 50s, but somebody out there will know better than me. <sighs> Should we do this right? I have, I'm, 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 you can see that the wax seal is there and, and I almost don't want to do this and keep it intact, but then I kind of thought, no, 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 let us release the juice that has been um, been in this bottle since forever. So let's do it, let's do it. Oh, actually, am I gonna be able to do it? It's very stiff. <gasps> Perfumes are for wearing, says Rich. Yes, they are, as long as you can get into them. <gasps> this is gonna be terrible if we can't actually get into this one. And I haven't got anywhere near me, any scissors or anything like that at all. Right, so, seen any good films lately? <gasps> Oh no, it's like got completely fused shut. Right, let's, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Persolais. Not hitting the gym enough, says DJ. I know, shocking. Wouldn't want it to snap. Oh, okay, I think we got something then. I'm gonna have to put this on skin, aren't I? I'm always afraid to break these types of bottles, says, yeah, me too. Okay, we're in, we're in, we're in. Oh, please be good. Please, 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 please be good. Right, are we ready? Oh, this could actually bring tears to my eyes. Okay, hang on. It's perfect. It... Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like completely overwhelmed by this now. Um... Okay, right, speak. Connect, connect thoughts with words. Um, right, so yeah, it's it's Chanel number no. five. It's recognizably number no. five. Um, but those aldehydes, I don't think I've smelt aldehydes 
or, or I've smelt the Chanel number no. five out has been so so soft. There's something so 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 gentle and plush about this. And actually, it's similar to the thought. Sorry, it's similar to the thought that I had when I tried a little bit of the liquid that's in the dabber on my skin, because already the, the the rose and the jasmine are coming through, but they are really really rich. They're really really voluptuous, and voluptuousness actually is not a quality that we would normally associate um, uh, in Chanel Number no. Five. I mean, I love Number no. Five, as you know, it's one of my favorite scents of all time, but I see it as being um, quite kind of streamlined, I don't know if streamlined is the, is the right word, but not not voluptuous, you know, something a, sort of more um, clean cut, yeah, maybe streamlined is the word that I'm looking for, less weighty than the kind of weightiness you would associate with the word voluptuous. Um, but this is, this is, this is, this is impassioned, this is, this has got blood, blood pumping through that rose and the jasmine, and dare I say it, you know, the, the quality of the sandalwood maybe is coming through already, which kind of seems to be giving um, giving the whole thing weight. And I so I so wish you could all smell it. Ah, oh, I really, really wish you could all smell it. I'm going to put some uh, onto a blotter so that we can do a proper a proper blotter update, um, and also talk about how it's developed on skin. Um, not blood, but other juices extracted from animals, says Smarks. Well, maybe, but but maybe Chanel number, no, I mean, I suppose Chanel number no. five might have had some civet, but what else might it have had of an, from animals? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. It's a good question. Um, need to get a vintage number 19, says DJ. Yes, I've got a vintage 19 that I got from Japan, and it's really, really wonderful. Um, wow. Well, okay. This is, it's in, it's in a very, very, very good condition. And and even though it is recognizably Chanel number no. five, it's like, it's like the grand matriarch of number no. fives. You know, it's like the number no. five that's come along and said, I'm going to put out all of you pretenders. Um, wonder if it has nitro musks in it, says Gavin. I don't know. Do you have a vintage parfum of Durissimo, says Woozy? No. I used to have a vintage Esprit de Parfum, and then somebody used it all up and didn't even leave any few any drops for me. And I've got a few vintage EDTs, not in the best condition, but not a not of. I have an old-ish X-tray, but I don't know whether it's been tampered with or. I, I don't think it's in such great condition. Right, let's have a quick sniff of the other blotters just so we can tell you where they're at. So um, the Greek, this one here, the Maison de Couture really, really metallic sheep now. Wow. Excellent. Very, very, very mossy. And what was this? This was the, ah, the Paris, yeah. Beautifully, beautifully rosy. The Opium pour Homme. Yeah, it's it's kind of doing that 90s guy thing in a very, very convincing way. And the Rive Gauche. Very, very classy. Very, very sophisticated. Phew. Well, thank you very much for sharing this little journey with me. I'm going to go off now and, and enjoy a number five sunset. Oh, it's so good. I'm so relieved that it's good, and I'm so pleased that it's good. Well, there we are. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much for all the, the nice comments. I have been I have been reading them as we're going along, but I'll, I'll go back and read the rest of them. And for those of you who watched all of the lives today, thank you for sticking around and stay tuned to social media for details of when the next videos are going to be coming. In the coming weeks, we will try to do new releases from Tom Ford. There's a Dior I hope to be able to do as well with you, uh, and certainly at least one new Hermes. Okay, see you soon. Take care. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now.